This is time invariance example number one. Formally prove whether or not each system is time invariant. Let's take a look at a general approach to prove whether or not each of these three systems is time invariant. When a system is time invariant, this also goes by the alternative name shift invariant, which perhaps is a little bit more descriptive of the concept that, that we're trying to test. Let's imagine this. Suppose we have a system T, we apply an input signal X to produce an output signal Y. Now imagine that we take this sequence from the output and shift it by a certain amount, say uh, n naught samples. Now if I take the same system, but now take the input signal X and shift that by n naught samples, then if we observe the output likewise shifted in such a way that these two sequences are identical, then we say the system T is time variant, or equivalently, we say it's shift invariant. Here's a proof structure to establish this case for system T. The top track represents the case of shifting the signal after processing. The bottom track represents the case of shifting before processing. If the post-shifted version and the pre-shifted version gives identical results for the outputs, then we say that the system is time invariant. Let's take a look at the detailed solution for part A. This is system T1, five times the delayed version of X by, X by 10 samples. X of N passes through our system to produce five times X of N minus 10. And then when it passes through the shift operation, we subtract N naught from the sequence number expression, whatever that happens to be. In this case, it's n minus 10. Next, we take x, pass it through the shift operation first. This is our pre-shifted case, giving us x of n minus n naught. The system operates as five times the delayed version of whatever is coming in on the input. I will write n minus n naught, and then subtract 10. Now we can compare the two to see if they are equal. And we see that we can interchange the order of these two terms. And sure enough, we do find that YA and YB are the same. That tells us that the system T1 is in fact time invariant. All right, this is system T2, which is the square of the input sequence. We pass x of n through our system, leading to x of n squared, and then we pass that through our shift operation. x of n first passes through the shift operation, and then it passes through the system. And we don't have to do any work at all to see that these are in fact the same and this system T2 is time invariant. The third system is T3, x of n divided by the time sequence index n. So as before, we pass x through our system, x of n divided by n, and then we shift. And we look for each expression involving our time index n. and then subtract n naught from each. For the second path, we do x of n minus n naught and apply that to our system. Now here, we see that x is x of n minus n naught because that's our input. Then the system acts to divide whatever it sees on the input by n. Let's reflect for a moment on the structure of these two equations. Here, n minus n naught is from the pre-shift operation, dividing by n, that's what the system does to any input. Up here, we have a subtraction of n naught from each of these expressions involving n because they are both from the post-shift. We see that yA is not equal to yB, therefore, system T3 is not time invariant. That wraps it up for this example.